Hello, welcome to the JPEF Advocacy Center. Today we are talking about the superintendent search in Duval County. My name is Shannon Varga and I am the Director of Data and Research for JPEF and I am pleased to introduce Lee Alfred Thomas, who is our Manager of Policy and Research at JPEF, who will now describe the timeline that the superintendent search has been on so far. Now, as we look into our superintendent search timeline, um, we see that in May 2023, Dr. Dana Krishnar was named the interim ahead of knowing that Dr. Green would retire on June 2nd of 2023. The Duval County School Board gathered and decided to begin a superintendent search in September of 2023. After receiving uh, the applications and, and seeing the applicants, uh, the Duval County School Board decided to halt their superintendent search and to concentrate on other things and extend Dr. Dana Krishnar for another six months um, to go into June of 2024. And in June, January of 2024, the Duval County School Board uh, met along with the Florida School Board Association to uh, decide when to re begin or restart the superintendent search. And a decision was made to begin that superintendent search on March 15th of 2024. So let's talk a little bit about the context that this next superintendent will be walking into. What do Duval County Public Schools currently look like? If you go to the district's website, you will see the data on the following slide. That Duval County currently serves 103,995 students from pre-K through grade 12. Just about half of those students are identified as female. Over half of them are identified as economically disadvantaged, which means that they are eligible for some kind of free or reduced price lunch. 42% are identified as African-American and Black, 17% are identified as Hispanic or Latina, and 32% are identified as white. Um, so what's important to point out here is that Duval is considered a mid-size urban district according to the National Center of Education Statistics, and over half of the student population is considered historically marginalized by previous policies or practice. And so while JPEF aims to serve all students and is for all student success, we particularly are focused on closing the opportunity gaps for these historically marginalized students. And again, there's over half the district um, qualifies under that designation. And so the next superintendent will be walking into this context. And on top of that, of the 67 counties in Florida, Duval is considered one of the top six for student population and top three for density of population, which I'm sure folks can <laughs> relate to. Um, and just there is just this issue broadly across the country right now of teacher shortages, which you have probably heard. And so putting some numbers to that, there are 55 teacher vacancies reported nationally. And almost half of those have come up in the past two years. So again, this is just a shortage that's happening nationally. In Florida at the beginning of the year, overall, we reported 5,000 teacher vacancies. And currently in Duval County, there are 72 teacher vacancies. So the next superintendent is walking into a situation in which countywide, statewide, and nationally, there's just a need, a deep need for more high quality teachers in the profession. Unfortunately, according to the Learning Policy Institute, a report that they released, Florida is considered one of the least attractive states for um, teachers to work in right now. And that is due to factors such as the feelings of control over their own classroom content, being excluded from policies that affect schools, um, just the high pupil to teacher ratio, which is related to the teacher shortage, test related job insecurity and just general dissatisfaction with the field. So again, we're in a teacher shortage and a superintendent is going to have to walk in and try to um, get high quality teachers in the door um, in an environment that is less than ideal at this moment. So another factor that we need to discuss are reading scores. And so third grade level reading is considered an important indicator in the literature of high school graduation, of being able to um, have a job after graduation and just general life well-being later on. And nationally, only 32% of fourth graders are reading on grade level according to the National Assessment of Education Progress, which has been collected for the past 60 years. And in Florida, 
39% of those students are reading on grade level. In Duval County, that number is 29% for fourth grade reading, according to the National Assessment for Education Progress. So literacy is both a county, state, and national issue with students not reading on grade level and not achieving this really early indicator of later life success. And just this professor from um, Claremont Graduate University, who is an expert in effective school leadership, just says that right now, the superintendency is an impossible position given the current state of politics. As more superintendents are left grappling with controversies, they have less time to focus on equity, student learning, teaching, or building relationships. So right now, again, just the, the landscape socially and politically is also incredibly difficult for superintendents. They're being drawn away from the things that we want them to focus on, which is student learning and well-being. And they're being focused on uh, more things like media. So that's just another factor in the context of why it might be so difficult and why the search might take a while. Here we have the qualities of a superintendent. Um, some we believe should be an instructional leader and coordinator, a relationship builder, a resource allocator, one who can bring funds into the district. I'm a budget holder, a food manager, a transportation manager, a can coalition build across different sectors and have different uh, persons and businesses and corporations involved and invested into our uh, district and our community, um, has knowledge of the community. So in order to do those things, you have to have knowledge of the community and knows uh, when equity can grow in the light of shadows. That's very important and has an affirmative vision. Who is a visionary of student learning and resiliency? And of course, um, we have the links below where you can check those things out on our website as well. So now uh, we had the superintendent timeline up until March 15th. So let's give you from March 15th until we choose a new superintendent. So March 15th, superintendent applications, they went live on the DCPS website. They will be advertised for 30 days and school board members will be able to review those applications as they are submitted. And on April 23rd, the school board will convene at a 9 a.m. workshop to identify the semifinalists for the superintendent uh, role and other uh, address other possible issues with the superintendent search. On April 24th, uh, the Florida School Board Association will send formulated questions, which will be one question by each school board member to the finalists. These responses by the finalists will, should be written or virtual uh, or verbal uh, virtual responses from the semifinalists and the semifinalists will have a week to respond. A week from that day of the 24th, May 1st, the responses will be uh, received by the Florida School Board of Association and they'll be sent on the next day, May 2nd, to the school board members to take a look at. And on May 7th, uh, the school board members will convene with the Florida School Board Association to select finalists. Yes, May 7th, the finalists will be selected and uh, for a superintendent for a special workshop at 2 o'clock p.m. And on May 13th and 14th, the finalists will arrive in Duval County for in-person interviews. May 13th will be interviews with the board's entire body, cabinet members and advisors. And on May 14th will be finalists in-person interviews with each school board member individually. And on May 23rd, school board, the school board will meet um, for a special meeting at 9 a.m. where with uh, Florida School Board Association. And they will select a new superintendent on May 23rd, 2024. June 4th will be the contract review, di review date with a July 1 planned hire date for our new superintendent of Duval County Public Schools. So how can you be involved? Listen, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you, attend regularly scheduled board meetings. Those board meetings usually happen on the first Tuesday of each month at six o'clock p.m. So please come on, join, and have I'll have a seat right next to you. I mean, right uh, right next to me for you, so you can join with me and be uh, informed and advised on all the things happening around Duval County Public Schools. And also, you can join our workshop or the workshop meetings for Duval County Public Schools. Those happen at nine a.m surrounding certain issues around Duval County and our public schools. Now, those workshops are usually placed on their website, so make sure you go to Duval County Public Schools to check out those special workshop meetings that usually uh, can be especially placed or they regularly happen.
Um, board, school board meetings are usually held in the first floor boardroom in the Klein Auditorium, um, and that is at the Duval County Public Schools uh, headquarters. So make sure you attend those regular board meetings at six o'clock every Tuesday, every first Tuesday um, in the Klein Auditorium at the school board headquarters. Um, the regular board meetings are open to the public. So as I said, come on, join me. I'll save a seat next to me for you so we can become informed and activate and engage our, uh, uh, for each other. And also engage with us. We want to be your trusted resource, your trusted um, voice when it comes to education. So please uh, engage with the Jacksonville Public Education Fund and make sure you sign up for our newsletters and stay up to date with our different events. As we will have a bunch of events surrounding superintendent search, our upcoming school board elections, and a host of other things that we look to be actively engaged with regarding our students, our parents, and our teachers here in Duval County Public Schools. So make sure you sign up for that sign up for that newsletter at the link listed here in this slide and we can't wait to be your trusted resource when it comes to education. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the superintendent search and engaging with JPEF.